Glory to God. Jenna, uh, we, we've been talking about the past few weeks, we're talking about tithing, the purpose of tithing. Then last week we talked about uh, divine partnership in the, in the things of God. And I hope you all got blessed by last week. I got blessed preaching it. I want to um, continue down this vein of finances and uh, prosperity uh, because, you know, we want to make sure we cover the basis. Now, you know, usually if we're, uh, and we've got to be careful. When I say certain things, I'm not saying to be critical of, of everything everybody's ever done, but at the same time, we, we end up sometimes with narratives or patterns that we don't even realize we fall into that are, that are harmful without really realizing they're harmful. Now, a lot of times we'll preach on giving or, 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 or being prosperous, and all we can talk about is giving your money, and you're going to get rich, and there's going to be special anointings on, on the offerings and that kind of stuff. And now some of that just, is just snake oil stuff. I'll be real honest with you. You know, I got a thousand-fold anointing tonight, and you give an offering, or you know, the Lord told me that if you would give $100 a night, you'll get $10,000 back by next week. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, 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 a blue tick coon hound show up at your house with a, a bag of money in his mouth, and that's your money return. <coughs> you know, it's kind of like those things. You know, take this, take this anointed salt, throw it over your shoulder, turn around three times, and you're going to be healed. Yeah, you, that's right. You're going to kill the snail, which is fine with me. I don't like them. They're ugly. So anyway, we, we need to make sure that we, we cover things thoroughly and understand the whole thing. Now, number one, God wants you to prosper. God wants to bless you. He does. He's put in financial principles, tithing, giving, that he does decree and declare that blessings will come on you. But if we're not careful, we will limit everything to how much you're giving. And, and, and how do you say this without, you know, if we're not careful, we can fall into the trap, particularly for traveling ministries and putting on our own whatevers. We're raising money while we're, you know, and, and so we, you give this big offering, you know, because we need money to do whatever. Okay? It's not all true always. It's not the, the, the entirety of it. Not everybody's like that. But I'm saying these are the traps we can fall into. So we have to be aware um, when ministering, um, and being careful. One of the things the Lord told Brother Hagen, he told him to be careful of the three G's. First of all was um, the, the girls, the gold, and the glory. Now, in ministry, he was telling him, watch out for women. Now he's a man. So if it had been a woman, she would told, he would give her the two G's and the M. Huh? Guys, that's right, guys. Watch out for the guys, the gold, and the glory. Okay, so it works either way. But in his case, um, as, a, as, a, as a male ministry, told him to watch out for the girls, the gold, and the glory. Now, why? Because, you know, uh, there's one of the things we found out over the years in ministries, we found out, and they've thought about this, we talk about this sometimes in ministers meeting, is there are, there are women who are attracted to power, not the anointing. They'll, they'll, look, they'll look them up in the hotels and come to their doors. I've had ministers tell me that. They've, they've knocked on their door. In fact, they called all the hotels until they found out where they were staying, came to their room to offer them um, a joy ride for the evening. Now what? That's the devil, obviously. Are you here? You're going home. And that's why some ministries, when they come in town, they, they, don't, want nobody know, they don't want anybody to know where they are. They don't want people to know where they are. They don't want, they don't want the church to tell them to stay in such and such hotel, nothing. They don't want anybody to know because they don't want people showing up. Second, you know, the, the, the last one he gave him, but I'm going to come out second, is the glory. We, God doesn't share his glory with any man. Okay? But then the other one was the gold, money. And this one, Brother Lord, Brother Hagan talked to him about being careful about how you conduct yourself in financial affairs with God's money. Okay? Be careful how we present things to people. Now, you've got people out there who say Kenneth Hagin is the father of the prosperity message, and they accuse him of saying a whole kinds of things he never said. And if they want to really want to know where he stood on certain things, all they've got to do is go read the book The Midas Touch by Kenneth Hagin, and you'll find that is a whole different take than all the junk they've said he said. Okay? There was a, it, was, it was, you know, there is a biblical prosperity, but it is done in balance and it is done in light of the Word of God. And some of this snake oil stuff, you know, that I got the thousandfold anointing and all this kind of stuff is just garbage. 
You know, give up to the higher anointing and all this kind of stuff. You're going to be blessed because you gave up to the higher anointing and all this stuff that the Bible doesn't say. It tells us to give to the ministries. Don't muzzle the oxen that tradeth out the corn. Okay, the, they, they that labor in word and deed are worthy of double honor. Okay, we're to take care, you know, that, if, that we reap with them spiritual things, we, they should reap with us financial things. I get that. That's all true. But when you take it out and, ex, and, and over embellish it to where now you're coming into town and you're, you know, you're, you're raising all kinds of money and everything and, you know, living a lifestyle that, that, that pastors don't live. Okay? Because you, well, you're, my ministry's big. La di da. Hello. That doesn't mean you get to live lasciviously. Okay? What it really means is you don't get to milk the people under the guise that your ministry is so much more important. Okay? But with all that said, we, we, we teach on prosperity. We teach on tithing and giving. We teach on the purposes of it. That kind of. I want to kind of go off on, on another side of this thing because prosperity is not solely contingent upon how much you give. Hello. See, if we're not careful, we'll teach people that as long as you give a certain amount, this is going to happen no matter what. And then we come back on the back end and find it ain't working. Okay? So let's look here in Genesis chapter 39. We'll read verses 1 through 3 and 23. Now, we know Joseph's been sold into slavery by his brothers, et cetera. And, you know, we, the whole story of Joseph. Um, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt in Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of the, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And he saw, his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now, we remember, he ends up getting thrown in jail after this because of Potiphar's wife. There's the girls. All right? She had the hots for Joseph. All righty? And then she lied on him. And, he got, and, and of course, no man can believe her, that their wife was running after another man, and so it was Joseph's fault. Okay? And uh, so he gets thrown into prison after Potiphar's wife tries to put the move on him, and he refuses to submit to it. And um, then the, verse 23, the keeper of the prison, he's in, in jail, looked not to anything that was under his hand. He put him in charge of stuff. Because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Now, this, whatever he did, not, listen, not just money, anything he did. Okay? 20, Deuteronomy 29.9. Deuteronomy 29.9. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. So fine. I'm sorry, that's a meek song. Okay? This is what God says to the, to the um, uh, verse 1 says, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Oreb. Okay, and then he goes on there and gets down to verse 9. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them. What? That you may prosper and all that you do. Notice here, now we get, we're getting, now don't just give. Keep all the words of the covenant. So prosperity now takes on an expanded uh, process of more than just giving. Hello? Walking in obedience to God and His Word is involved in prosperity. You don't, you don't get it just because you gave. We teach that. We take up offerings that way. I'm going to say, primarily in our Word of Faith charismatic circles. I'm one of them. All right? I mean, I went to Raymond Bible Training Center. You can't get any more Word of Faith charismatic than that. Okay? You just can't. And we, too often, when we're going to take up our offering, man, you're going to give in this offering, then God's going to do this. We're going to have a, you're going to have a supernatural debt cancellation next week, and millions of dollars are coming your way, and you're going to have a, I mean, Robin Leach is showing up at your house because you're now living the Christian life of the rich and famous. Hello. But God says, keep the words of the, of the covenant. Keep all the words of this covenant. So now we find out that obedience to God in his word also goes with prosperity. Now, tithing and giving is obedience to his word, so that's, that is an aspect of it. It is not the sole aspect of it, okay? I mean, you know, you're out 
carousing with other women and all this kind of mess, and you're going to come to church and tithe, and you're going to be rich. It don't work that way. Not as not the blessing of the Lord anyway. Well, you're in the grace. He's going to do it anyway. Just go to another channel. I ain't got time for that kind of foolishness. You've been brainwashed into something. Now, keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Look with me, if you will, to the first chapter of the book of Joseph. I mean, Joseph. Joshua. Jo Joseph, Joseph got a book you know about, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Joshua, chapter 1. And you may think I'm reading verse 9. I'm not. I might end up reading it, but that's not where we're heading. Oh, verse 8. Okay. Look here. Now, now, now after the death of Moses, uh, the servant of God, it came to pass that the Lord spake to Joshua, the son of Nun, saying, uh, Moses minister, saying, Moses is dead. Okay. He's down in verse 7, he tells him, uh, Only be strong and very courageous, for thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now stop. What do you tell him? Be strong and courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. There is the aspect of obedience to God's word that is involved in prosperity that we cannot leave out. You just can't go live any way you want to give. Say, I'm under grace, or I'm, under, I'm, I'm full of faith, or you know, God's pre-forgiven me, so it doesn't matter. All the stuff that we can kind of come up with is just not thoroughly scriptural. There's a half-truth in it. There's a partial truth in it. Um, and then run around and want to claim the blessings. Hello. When God added more to it, it's like people saying the only commandment in the Bible is to love one another. No, that's not the only commandment. Matter of fact, when the, when the, rich, when the, when the um, person told Jesus, Jesus said, well, how do you read the law? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said, you rightly said, for on this hinge all the law. That was two in there. Okay? And so we've got to be careful. And then we go throughout the New Testament, we find all kinds of things that are commandments. This is his commandment. They love one another as he loved us. But that's the only commandment is to love one another. The first one was to love the Lord your God. We, we get caught up in these little narratives sometimes, and we, we leave stuff out instead of taking the whole. Okay? So here he says um, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. Okay? And when you do that, don't turn from the left or to the right, that you'll prosper wherever you go. This book of the law. Now we know this at the time that we had the five books of this, they had the five books of Moses was it. So that was, that was the word of God. Okay? So the book of all, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That what? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Highlight that. You should have a highlighter, pen, something to make stars with. Highlight the part that says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. Because you see, when you want to come back and prosper in everything, you can't leave out the part that says that you may observe to do according. You don't get to leave that out. That doesn't get left out of the equation. That doesn't get left over on the roadside and you go, well, it don't matter. You know, God's going to prosper me no matter what. No. For then, now let's say, for then. <clears throat> what was the for then after? Meditate in the word day and night, that you may observe to do all according, according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy, way, make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success, or deal wisely in the affairs of life, one translation says. So here we have God giving commandment to Joshua, saying, don't let the word get out of you. Observe to do the whole work, not just the part you like. I'm telling you, people got a hold of um, uh, uh, that. That um, and I don't keep harping, it, but it's, it's kind of the hot narrative in the in the, uh, the our circles these days. Is, is grace and, and really an excessive teaching on grace, not a not a biblical balanced teaching of grace, which does not mean compromising it. That mean we act, we we add a little law to it to make it, you know, biblical. But you know, um, 
grace where you are you, you, you are absolved from all responsibility that no matter what you do, God's still going to do all this. That's just not biblical. And I can show you scriptures in the New Testament that prove that's not biblical. But it, it sells better. We're going, to put on, we're going to strap on the electronic machine, sit in that chair, eat whatever we want to eat, and it's going to go bzzz, 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 bzzz. In six weeks, we're going to have Arnold's weightlifting, bodybuilding abs. And we didn't have to do anything. The machine did it for us. Hello. No, but it gives you that all fat. It just takes it all down. Because you've got that little electronic device going, bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. it's making the muscles tense. And it's making you lose weight and get six-pack abs. I got news for you. You keep sitting in that chair and keep drinking uh, those, those uh, two-liter sodas and eating all that food, and you're going to have a keg ab. Okay? Are you here? Don't, don't think that you can hook up this little electronic. And we do these same things. We'll think, I can just sit there, and because grace is there, it's going to automatically make me blessed. But God says, obey my word. God says you have to do what's written therein. You have to follow after my word. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, 1 Kings 2, 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, what? That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Look over in the Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Notice there, they were told now and one thing you should notice by now uh, if you're turning there all these words for lord or l-o-r-d capital is the covenant word this is covenant talk even in covenant god said observe judgment testimony statutes law in other words keep my word all right second chronicles Chapter 20, verse 20. Now remember, the, the, um, I'm trying, yeah. this is when all the children came down against Jehoshaphat, and they went to the Lord, and the Lord spoke, and, um, you know, said, what do we do? He sent out the praisers and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so in verse 20, it says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall be established. Believe as prophets, so shall ye prosper. Now, here's another aspect, not just the word, but those who are speaking by unction of the Holy Ghost, amen, speaking the counsel of God, amen, we, we live in an era where there's disrespect for authority. Abject disrespect for authority. You can't believe the things I get told. Working the job I took, you know, working at the school. I mean, I've been F-bombed and cussed out and, I mean, you know, threatened by people that I could kill. I mean, literally, if, if they came after me, I, 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 I could, they could send them out in the body bag. Some little kid like this bumped me one day trying to man up on me. I just got down in his face. I said, don't you ever bump me again. Get out of my face. I said, you better get this clear. You don't bump me. Because you've got, you got to stand your ground. Because they're, they're trying to show everybody that they could take on, you know, that they're whatever. And then you don't bump me. You're not going to man up on me like that here. Okay. You, you gotta, you, if you don't, you lose control. I mean, it's, it's not that you're trying to not walk in love, that you can't have that. Everybody's watching it because then you'll lose control of the circumstances. Yeah. So do you not? Do you want to go look? Let's go to the mirror. You're this tall. I outweigh you by 150 pounds probably. No, maybe not that much. Okay. At minimum 100 pounds. And you're going to come bumping on me? I don't even have to fight you. I've got to just, just sit on you. Hello? Are you here? 
I mean, the disrespect. Well, that spirit is not just out in the world. It's got into the church. And when the prophets, those who are men and women of God who are speaking about the anointing and unction, say something people don't want to hear, they reject it. Come on now. And the Bible says, believe his prophecy and you'll prosper. They'll reject it because it doesn't go in line with what they want to hear. What are they doing? They're doing like the Bible said, they heaped unto themselves teachers having itching ears. And like Janice and Jambres, ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hello? Are you here? You're going home. One of the jobs of ministries, in particular pastors, I mean, all ministries should be doing this, but pastors is to say stuff you don't want to hear. That brings correction, adjustment, course correction on things. I had somebody a number of years ago come to church, they had gone to some meeting somewhere and come back, and, I mean, you know, it, they must have got off and weirded out while they were gone. They were pretty, they were all right until they went to the meeting and came back. They were weird. Okay? You know, all the, all the birds, the, when Jesus talked about the birds being in the trees and all that kind of stuff, they were demon spirits. You know, and, the, you know, and the mustard seed, um, you know, that, that's right, it grew that tree and, they, and all those things came in and meet, de eat demon spirits and all that. He got, he got all off on this and the Holy Spirit was not a person and he's an it because Romans call it the Holy Spirit itself. And, uh, you know, and we're like, I'm like, ur, ur, ur. you know, you can see the, you can see the car eyes, trust in me, trust in me. You're like, oh, my goodness. Hello. And um, I said, well, you know, let me, look, you know, and I, I disagree with him. I told him right there on the spot, I said, nope, the Holy Spirit's a person, you know. I said that, you know, and, and, we, and, and he, get, I said, but don't you go sharing this people in the church. I said, we'll talk about this some more, don't you. Went right out and found everybody you could find in church and started telling them. Well, buddy, I told you not to share it. But now that you opened up the door and you started sharing it, I got people calling me up. Pastor, did you know that so-and-so uh, saying this and that? Yep. Told him not to. So I started doing a teaching on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Some of you over here remember that series. You know, uh, using um, um, P.C. Nelson's book as our foundation, uh, the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he got mad and left. Well, Sold all of his Kenneth Hagin books right then. You know, when was, just give them, basically give them away because he had gotten a new revelation. See, we, we've got to be able to receive correction. Amen. Now, listen, if they're weird and they're, I mean, if they're giving you correction that's not biblical, that's one thing. But I was using Scripture. Lots of it. To, uh, to, to counterman your, you know, your, your one little, one, one word, one word in one passage trying to take that and build a whole doctrine on it. Well, if you're going to prosper in life, you're going to have to listen to the prophets. Now listen. Out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. Okay? Just don't take one word that somebody had, and that's how you base everything. Okay? It has, it has to be, you have to be able to bear it out with truth and Scripture. But God will use those who speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit to give you things that will Cause you to prosper. Amen? Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 26.5, And he sought with God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper well. And we talk about kings of Israel. They would get all caught up. They'd marry some harlot from the other country, and the next thing you know, they got all kinds of groves of idols and everything, and all this stuff, and they got problems. Yep. And so then, you know, God had to raise up another king or another prophet come in and then rebuke him. They tear it all down and start over again. And here, as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Don't think just because you prospered in the past, you can go out and live any way you want to live later, and it's going to keep working. I'm still giving. I'm still tithing. Yeah. But you still need to be seeking. Because God wants your heart as much, well, actually, more than he wants your money. Usually, money should represent your heart. Sometimes it just represents uh, uh, the, the Holy Ghost Ponzi scheme. I'm going to get rich by doing this, and the heart's not there. And we, get, we still need to be seekers of God. Amen? 
Second Chronicles 31, uh, 21, and, and every work that he began in service of the house of the Lord and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. Wow, there we go again. Seeking God, all your heart, and he prospered. Second Chronicles 32, notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself with the pride of his heart, both he and his inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, made himself treasures of silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, for all manner of pleasant jewels, storehouses also, for the increase of corn, wine, oil, stalls, for all manner of beasts, and coats of flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. That's King Jimmy for a lot of stuff. Okay? This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course, course of Gihon, and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Man, that doesn't even say anything about him giving here. Why? Because the other side of this story was he humbled himself before God. Are you here? Are you here? He humbled himself. So this is another side of prosperity is, is keeping ourselves pure and right and honoring and seeking of God. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, folks, they can call themselves a Christian and have ungodly counsel. You all hear you go home. I said they can call themselves a Christian and give ungodly counsel. And I'm going to tell you, you get together with your girls and they start shaking their head and get the finger up, and I tell you what I would do, you better run. Because you're about to get ungodly counsel. How do you know? Because they're going to give you what they would do based on their experience or how they ain't going to put up with this mess. Instead of what did God say in his word, what represents the counsel of God? Amen? Amen? Are you here? You're going home. So blessed is he who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Y'all hear you gone home? Yes. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. <coughs> his leaf shall also not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now stop. This man is not going to sit in the seat of the council. They're going to listen to the counsel of the ungodly. They're not going to stand in the way of sinners, sit in the seat of the scornful, but they're going to delight in God's word. Again, it doesn't say he's giving in the offering. Now, you understand if you're obeying God's word, you're doing those things. But it's, I'm trying to show you that it's not that, the, that we've taken out one aspect and made that the sum, the, the, the sum of the whole. That as long as you give, you're going to get. We've missed it. Because obedience to the Word of God and delighting in the Word of God and delighting in honoring God and delighting in seeking after God will make you prosper. And when you're doing that, I can guarantee you, you're giving and you're tithing. Hello? And so I'm not saying this in, light, in, in, in lieu of giving. I am saying there's more to it than just giving. And then we're going to segue back into last week's Scripture, 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Again, we kind of touched on this last week, but then I'm going to wrap this and, and tie this together right here. All we have read right here is dealing technically or basically or in essence with soul prosperity. The prosperity of your heart and your soul being submitted to God, honoring God, loving God, doing God's word, obeying God's word, living in God's word, living in the light of God's word, doing the things God's word says, and then you prosper. Don't think that you can walk in here week after week after week. Now, let me say that. We, we, um, we understand, and I've said this before, God's mercy is, is honestly unfathomable. We can't figure out how deep it is how great it is we can get a partial glimpse of it 
but we just don't see the fullness of it. We experience bits and pieces of it, and that's more than we could ever can almost handle. But it's, it's amazing. But don't think you can consistently live. And here's where I'm going to maybe draw the line. People who are struggling and know they're struggling and don't want to struggle, it, I'll be honest with you, is one thing. People who are doing wrong and don't care and justify it is another. Hello. In other words, instead of saying, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be doing it, and, and Lord, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm having a hard time here. I don't want to live like this. I'm struggling. I don't know how to get free. You know, well, well here's how to get free. You need to do this. Or they don't need to even be bothered by it because they're under grace, so they're forgiven already, so they shouldn't even be bothered by it. There's a reason their heart's condemning them because it's separating them. It separates their heart from God. It separates them from walking in purity and rightness with God, and they know it. Their heart knows it. Amen? So God is merciful. God is merciful to the, to the one who's trying, but they just, they're just struggling. Oh, my. And some people struggle with stuff that, you know, you don't struggle with, but then you turn around and you struggle with stuff they don't struggle with. Hello? Are you here or you gone home? And it may not be sin. It might be self-condemnation. It might be, there might be, oh, you know, but the thing is, God is so merciful to the people who, who want, have a desire, but they're struggling. But do not get over here on the other side of that thing and think, it don't matter. And have a hard heart towards obedience to God. Not one of those penitent that wants to do right, that's, that's struggling with something. But a hardened heart that goes, I love this message of grace because that means I can do whatever I want to and it don't matter. And we go out and teach people that. It does matter. You just said God's merciful. Yeah. It does matter. And God is merciful. But the attitude of your heart plays into it. Hello? I mean, Paul got so frustrated about some of his, some of his, some things in his life that he, got, he, wrote a, he wrote a whole chapter about it. Romans chapter 7. That which I do, I don't do. Which I wouldn't do, I do. Uh, that which I don't want to do, I'm doing it. That which I want to do, I can't do it. Da, 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 da. Who will deliver me from this body of flesh? Thanks be to God. <coughs> he, knew, he knew his answer lay, the, the answer laid in the things of God. And he turns around Romans chapter 8 and says, There is therefore no, now to condemnation, no condemnation to those who walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. That's not in the original. Go down to verse 4. It's in there. However you want to do it, I don't care. It's in verse 4. So you just go, There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Your, heart, your heart's going to condemn you if you're walking in the flesh. That's a struggle. God's merciful to that struggle. Okay? But I'm telling you, as your soul prospers in the things of God, as you, as you prosper in your relate, walk with God and your heart with God, he's going to prosper you in other things. Amen? So prosperity is not confined to working automatically because you gave. Now, preachers don't like to say that a lot of times because people tend to think people ain't going to give. I'll guarantee if you get a hold of this, you'll give more. Because when your heart pursues God, your heart's in tune with God, and your heart's connected to God, and you're, doing, you're following God's word, and you want to please God, you want to honor God, your heart's going to be enlarged. Amen? I, um, I sent a letter to, the, to our, our, our friends at uh, the church that sent the money and uh, told them, that how, how overwhelmed and how overjoyed our congregation was that another ministry would just be um, so full of the love of God they wanted to bless our church. And they're, they're raising money to get out of their debt. And in the middle of that, they stopped to receive an offering to, get, to help us get out of our debt. And I said, and I said you know, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, you know, this is just an example that they've been taught well. Amen. Their heart is enlarged. And it's, it's inspired our congregation to want to live the same way and to do the same kind of thing. Amen? Amen. To, to rise up and be blessing others. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're on our way. Can you say amen? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the time, for the offering I mean, that has come in today. Bless the people because of it. Bless them because that not only do they understand that their prosperity is tied to giving, it's also tied to obedience to your word. So enlarge their hearts to the things of God. Enlarge their hearts to the blessings of God. Enlarge their hearts to the things you desire that they walk in and see and understand and do for the kingdom and then walking in harmony with you. Prosper them not only because of the gate, but prosper them because their heart is enlarged towards you. Let them see clearly the heart of God and the word of God and the things of God, the purpose for their existence and the purpose for their, their part in the body of Christ. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Glory to God. Can you say hallelujah? Moms, we love you. We bless you. Have a lovely day today. Uh, we, we have run way over. So if y'all can help us get this thing broke down and get it out of here, y'all can go get to the restaurants and wait for four and a half hours. We have a little place that we've kind of eat on Sundays uh, a lot. And they're, they're not really busy on Sundays, you know. They, you know I mean, most of might have to wait. I mean, not even wait to get a seat. Wait an extra five or ten minutes for your food. Okay? We're not even open today. We called yesterday. I called yesterday. I said, well, what's your special tomorrow? We ain't open tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> there goes our plans. Thank God for honey baked ham. Because <laughs> at 4.30, I had, to make, I had to shift the whole purpose and plan of what we were doing today. Yep. Now, I won't punt. I had, I, had to, I had to go on fourth down. I was, it was fourth and 20. I had to come up with something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We love you. God bless you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Love you. God bless you. Yeah.